I'm Dr. Christopher Mote of Cornerstone Health Community, board certified family physician and certified in functional medicine. And today I want to talk to you about how to get great sleep. It evades most of us. In fact, it's estimated that one in three people in the United States will have a prolonged period of insomnia throughout any given year. And that makes for a lot of crabby people. <laughs> in our clinic, we look at the dirty dozen reasons why people don't sleep. And many of these you've heard of, perhaps a few of them you haven't. First, we would start with the idea that we do all need good sleep hygiene. We're not going to get good sleep if we just bought a puppy and that puppy wants to sleep on our bed or a cat wants to sleep on our face. That doesn't work for good sleep. Secondly, the room has to be a cooler temperature. In fact, our body wants to cool by a full one degree at its core. And to do that, you need about a five degree drop in ambient temperature. And so it helps to keep a cooler room. Uh, then caffeine. It's a killer for sleep, especially if you have caffeine after noontime, because it takes a, a full 12 hours for even the healthy of us to eliminate half the milligrams of caffeine that we drink. So afternoon does not work for caffeine intake and sleep. And then lack of exercise. So exercise does two things for us. It really helps the brain chemistry for our uh, ability to get to sleep, GABA and serotonin and melatonin. Um, it also helps us to eliminate cortisol, which keeps us awake. And so by exercising, especially perhaps a walk at the end of the day, can really help to metabolize cortisol. And then we have uh, outdoor light and blue light. If we don't get enough outdoor light into our eyes during the day, our brain never fully sees daylight. And then if we don't block this blue light that comes from our iPhones or our screens and our indoor lighting, if we don't block it, then it tricks our brain and makes it think it's day. So we don't get full day, but we don't get full night, and our brain just sees gray all the time, and it causes a deterioration in our circadian rhythms. It's a very big deal. And then uh, eating too close to bedtime leaves the digestive system turned on, which is a deterrent to the body getting into the deepest stages of sleep. So we'd like to keep our food at least two hours away from our bedtime. Then melatonin, disruptions in melatonin include a lack of melatonin and a regular timing of the melatonin where it comes up too late to get good sleep and it spills over into the morning and keeps us from waking up with great energy. And then progesterone, if it's low, we don't have the greatest facilitator in our body for GABA. And we need GABA to shut off a racing mind and get great sleep. So low progesterone is a problem. And lastly, cortisol. Of the three hormones, cortisol at bedtime that comes up and gives us that second wind of energy at 10 o'clock when we really had hoped to be asleep, that's probably the number one hormonal reason people don't go to sleep. And then we have mycotoxins from mold or other biotoxins from other infections that interfere with our hormones and our neurotransmitters that prevent our sleep. And there's apnea. Either we lose our airway or our diaphragm just doesn't take a breath for us and when our brain lacks for oxygen that's called apnea and it stimulates a stress response that keeps us awake. So at Cornerstone Health Community we look at all 12 of these and in combination it's robbing us of our sleep. We can get that back because really don't we all want to sleep great? <laughs>